Hey, good morning, Facebookers, YouTubers. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and the Clayway here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. If you find this video to be helpful, uh, subscribe to my page, click the notifications. If you got a question for me, you can reach out to me on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook. I'll try to answer your questions. I can't help you with your baby mama drama, but we'll try to help you if you need something done with your car. So this morning, I'm going to talk to you about what you need to look for if you're buying a pre-owned car. Now, buying a pre-owned car is generally a pretty big deal to most folks. Not all of us are super wealthy and can afford to buy our 16-year-old a $12,000 car for their first car because they need something safe. So when we go out and spend our hard-earned $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000, uh, we want a lot of value for our money. I want to take you through a little bit of reality before you go out and purchase that car. The reality is that you're going to get what you pay for and you're going to get what you use your head for. Now I don't want you guys to go out overthinking what you're doing. Buying a car is a pretty simple thing. If you use the common sense and the, the mind that the Lord gave you, you're probably going to be successful. If you're going out nitpicking a $3,000 car and really want a $10,000 car, you probably should go out and buy a $10,000 car, a certified pre-owned. Um, and then you're going to have the confidence in the automobile that you purchase. But say you're purchasing it from your neighbor or you're purchasing it from what looks to be a shady car dealership. There's a couple things you can do at home to make yourself feel good and be successful without spending a lot of money taking it to a repair shop and they're rather simple things. Now we all know that I sell cars quite frequently, probably about one to two a month. Um, generally the cars I sell are not the same as the cars that most people sell. My cars are probably, I like to think of them as closer to a certified pre-owned. Uh, I go through them and try to fix everything that I possibly can, uh, it, everything that's wrong you know, for that matter. But even I make mistakes. Um, I'm only human. So I guess the, the painful thing for me, and it, and it doesn't happen as much as it used to in the past because I've got a very good reputation and I, it's important for me to keep it that way. Um, used to have people nitpick cars and they almost now when I'm selling a car, they're so unbelievably good. It's unbelievable. So it, <laughs> it creates another problem. But what I wanted to talk to you about is, it, it, cars are pretty simple. If the car starts up and it sounds good and it, and it drives fine, then it probably is, people. There's probably not much more to that. If the person knows the history of the car, it, it's great. If they have a Carfax, that's great. Um, I don't personally like Carfax all that much because if... if you know, say somebody fixed their car underneath a tree in their front yard and it was in an accident, Carfax can't tell you that. So I wouldn't rely so much on Carfax, but Carfax does have a lot of good information in it. And so does a, a thing called, um, what's the other one called? AutoCheck. AutoCheck is an Experian-based uh, information system, and they're really good. They're not quite as well known as Carfax, uh, so people don't think it's the same thing, but it actually it gives a better detail than a Carfax does. It's just harder to decipher. It's almost like reading binary code in some ways, but then in other ways, if the person that's showing it to you uh, reads it to you properly, um, shouldn't be an issue. I'm going to try not to move while it's I talk. nervous tick I have. Anyways, so what we got is we want to jack up our car right underneath the control arms, and I'm going to grab Okay, when I say underneath the control arm, approximately in this area you're going to put your jack. And what you're going to do is you're going to get that vehicle's wheel up to ride height, just like it was sitting on the ground. You don't want to push it all the way up, go all crazy. You just want to bring it up about an inch or two up off the ground. And what that's going to allow you to do is you're going to take both arms, one at the top and one at the bottom, and you're going to pull in and out. And if you have any movement at all, that generally is either a wheel bearing or a ball joints bag. Now you're going to do the same thing at the 3 o'clock and the 8 o'clock position. You're going to move it in and out. And that's either the inner tie rod or the outer tie rod. If it moves all four ways, up and down like this, that's generally a wheel bearing. You can check that in your driveway and it don't cost you anything. 
And, and most people that are selling a good, honest car will let you uh, take it to a service repair facility, and you can pay them to check it over. The only thing that I want to talk to you about with them guys is, remember, they're in the business to sell you service. They don't get paid just because you got a oil change for $19.95, and you already know that you went to AutoZone and all the oil change components are $30. Well, what they're doing is, is they're taking that time that you've given them to service your car and take a look at it and see what they can sell you on top of that. You know, brakes and stuff like that. That doesn't mean they're going to lie to you. It just means that they're going to try to sell you something that you don't need. Now, also, you got to remember, when you take it to a service shop, remember that they're there to sell you that service, but what can you live with? What needs to be done? Now, these guys are going to paint doom. They're going to paint doom and gloom. Sorry, interrupted the video. Um, and they're going to try to sell you everything, and they're going to say, Oh, if you don't get that wheel bearing done today, oh, a wheel could fall off. I have never seen a wheel fall off because of bad wheel bearing ever in my life. And if it's that bad, you won't buy the car anyways because the stinking thing will wobble around the road. But just because the wheel bearing's a little bit loose does not mean it's the end of the world. Wheel bearings are very inexpensive nowadays because they're cartridges and they're only about 50 bucks. And any shop that's charging over $75 or $100 to put one in is really getting over on you because they are one of the things that we do the most in the shop. And they're the simplest. Sometimes they're rusty and sometimes they come out hard and sometimes we have to charge more labor. But that's very, very unuseful. Now, if you're looking at a Jeep Liberty like this one, um, the things to watch for in the north, and you'll see mine, has a little bit of scaling rust on it. Uh, that's pretty typical, but we don't want to see any seepage, and we don't. And, and we want to look at the front seal, and obviously uh, with this vehicle, we've got a new um, water pump, timing chain, and stuff like that. We've done a lot of work to this one, and, and that's already been done. Timing chains are very, very common in these 3.7s and 4.7s. The other thing is the, or the transmission pan. Transmission pans love to rust out on these things. I had a lady one time with her Jeep Liberty in here, and I was putting a new motor in it for her, and just a quick story, <laughs> brushed my hand across the back of the transmission pan, and I was on the ground. I didn't have it up on the lift, and <laughs> got transmission fluid all over me, and I called the lady, and I said, hey, uh, your transmission pan's bad. Um, it's going to be about 150 bucks to put a new one on there. She's got all bent out of shape and told me I was running her bill up and I was like, hey lady, I didn't take my hand and blow freaking rust all over the bottom of your transmission pan. Basically called me a liar and a horrible person and, and told me how she was already paying me to do an engine and, you know, I mean, it was just one of them things. Uh, people are like that. But you can look at things like broken boots, you know, stabilizer link pins and this is a stabilizer link pin right here. They're very common to be bad. They're generally about 20 bucks a piece. They're pretty easy to replace. A lot of automobiles have that. Um, you know, bushings up underneath there. You're gonna find cracks and stuff. Motor mounts are a big one. Uh, you need to check for them. I'll show you how to do that, hopefully, here during the video. Uh, it's running on a lot longer than I expected it to. You're going to find, if you're if you're in the north, you're going to find rust. This is going to be normal. This is actually in pretty good condition. Uh, this particular vehicle uh, is in pretty good shape. Um, it's just normal. But you're going to want to check the seals behind here. Do you have little drips right here? Do you have drips? This is the rear differential and where the drive shaft comes in there. Do you have drips coming out of there? That's, you know, that's kind of a major thing. Uh, if you're looking at the back here and you see stuff like that, that's just moisture that's coming out from the fill plug. If you have drips down here, this cover, if it has a rear differential like that, most front wheel drive cars don't. But if it did and it's leaking, that's not a big deal at all. Uh, out towards the wheels, now this is wet because it's you know snowing outside and stuff. Uh, you would have drips down here, like this has drips right down here. I know that's just water on mine. I don't have any wheel cylinder leaks, but if it was dripping and you're in a dry climate and it's dripping like that, you, you might be dealing with like a bad wheel cylinder or a rear differential that's leaking. You can take your finger and smell it and rub it across there. And it, even if you're just kind of layman to it, looking something over doesn't hurt anything. And anybody who has a problem with you looking it over, 
is you know an issue now i want to go on to the next how thing how can you tell if the brake pads are worn down or not well if you look at these pins they usually have these boots behind them and if the pins are super extended out that means the brake pads at its at the end of its life so you can check that and you basically could put your finger back here and if you put your finger in there and i'll show you with my finger if you put your finger in there and you can feel them two ribs right there you're probably your brake pads are pretty good but if that accordion is all stretched out then you probably time for new brake pads and you can tell the person that hey it's going to need brake pads pretty soon and they'll either put them on there for you i would put them on there for you i'd probably already have it done if i was selling a car and it needed it um or they can now these are the shocks that we just took off of this jeep you notice how one is extended and one isn't extended you can basically tell that these are bad if you look at the base of this has a lot of dirt and oil on it that's because the oil started seeping out of the shock it started collecting dirt and we knew it was bad just because it's rusty and stuff like this the shock isn't great but it isn't bad it, you know it isn't bad like this one is obviously so we replaced them for that reason but most vehicles that have you know 115 120,000 miles on them have the shocks been replaced they're probably going to need replacing even if they haven't been replaced because they've had a lot of road trip. now if we raise the bonnet or the hood uh depending on what country you're in we can look at a couple different things and tell some things from what's going on first we can look at the brake fluid reservoir how high or how low is it if it's real high did they add fluid are them pins all the way out and if it's real high and the pins are all the way out that means they added brake fluid you should never have to add brake fluid to a brake system unless there's a problem uh changing out your brake fluid now nah, that's a that's kind of one of them things that uh you know some mechanics say yes some mechanics say no now the other thing that you can look at is your tra the transmission fluid now transmission fluid is generally checked when the vehicle is warmed up or it's and it's in park or neutral but when you do check the transmission fluid which this vehicle this jeep liberty 2010 jeep liberty doesn't have doesn't have a dipstick tube for transmission fluid but you can almost always pull the whatever fluid you're checking and you can read along it or grab the owner's manual and it'll tell you you know what it should be and how it should look now uh, transmission fluid in a hundred thousand mile vehicle may be on the brown side um not so red uh i personally am a big believer in never changing transmission fluid but i will tell you that that is an opinion based thing uh i'm 43 years old and i work on cars all the time and no good ever comes out of changing transmission fluid. I actually hate that they try to sell that service to you at the oil change place. But if you've owned the vehicle all its life, do what the service manual tells you to do. You know, whatever your own manual says, that's what you should do. And if I owned a car from brand new, I would certainly do that. The other thing you can do is you could take a blanket and put it over the top of the hood, start the vehicle up and see if you see any sparks jumping. That'll tell you if you need spark plug wires. Most spark plug wires new from the, fa when they're factory wires, so if you're looking at a car that has over 100,000 miles on it, will be numbered. And if they're numbered, that means they've never been replaced. No big deal. I mean, if, they, if they're not broken, don't fix it, but you can't break it if it's already broken. So you might as well replace it. In this particular situation with the Jeep Liberty, the newer style Jeep Liberties have three coils, and then spark plug wires that run over to the other side. I'm assuming because it's more inexpensive to produce the wires than it is to produce the coils, and they did that to save money at the factory. I don't think there's any engineering benefit to only having three coils over the top, and also any of us who've owned cars that have coil overs, we know that coils go bad, and they can cause some frustration with trying to figure out which one it is, blah, blah, blah. So, in my personal opinion i don't mind that design i actually kind of like it i prefer the distributor design in some ways that it's a little bit less inefficient than say the coilovers are but the coilovers they have tendency to get water and moisture inside them and when they get cold and it you know the the water freezes it expands bust the coil and then you're out 60 bucks well, obviously when you're going out to look at a vehicle the first thing you want to do before you even start it up is you want to ask the person did you have the vehicle running very anytime soon if they didn't then you just go ahead and pull the dipstick look at the color of the oil if it's super super black it needs an oil change 
Ask the previous owner about how many times they maintenance the oil and if they have any service records for that. Buying a vehicle that has service records is the best thing you can possibly do to protect yourself. If the person has a stack of service records this thick, you're probably getting a good car. And if they're selling it for a good discount, grab it as quick as you can because that car will be sold tomorrow. Because there is people that will ask them questions, and if they get the proper answers, they know they're getting a good deal and they'll buy that car and you won't have the opportunity to purchase it. So the next thing that we could look at is we can look at the cooling system. Okay, the reservoir here, now you gotta understand, reservoirs aren't always full. Now in my situation, I have my reservoir filled up properly. And I also wanna tap on the top of the cap and see how hot it is. Now, ra radiator caps have a two part. Now I just drove this in 50 miles to the shop. So we should have coolant up to the top, which we, eh, it's down there a little bit, can't even see it, but that's okay because I know that I service this vehicle and I know that the coolant's at the proper level. But just the same, you want to check that. If you see coolant inside there, great. What you want to see is nice green coolant, but that also gives us a pause for concern too because did this person fill that up? You know, are they trying to hide a leak? And the only thing that you can do is look underneath it and see if you have any water coming down or see any signs of coolant. If you're not buying a car from a car dealership, okay, and say you get to the car and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, you can't believe how beautiful the car is. This car is not beautiful. But you can't believe how beautiful it is and the guy doesn't have service records for it. Just know that he probably sent that vehicle out for detail and one is either a very intelligent person or he's trying to do something. I don't think you have to have too much pause for concern. That's when you get in the car and you just use common sense. Does the car drive good? Does it run good? How are the tires on it? Now in this particular situation, the tires are in pretty decent shape. They all match. I'm going to tell you, people that have unmatching tires on their cars probably aren't selling the greatest of product. That means that they were too cheap to buy a set of $300 tires and they didn't care for the car all that much. That's okay if you're getting a good deal, but if they're charging you every dime and dollar for the automobile, then you wanna ask them, well, you're asking so much for it, uh, and it doesn't even have matching tires on it. You know, That's an expense that you're gonna incur. You're gonna incur that expense with any automobile you buy because tires, they wear out. I guess simply put, when you're out buying a car, if you like the person you're buying it from, it's probably an okay car. If you like the car itself, I don't want you to get all crazy and you know, act like you've gotta have a $10,000 car for $3,000. It drives me batty. I know I sell a good car. Uh, I don't generally discuss price all that much with the people who come to look at my stuff because I will detail my stuff. I will get the Carfax, I will have the service records. I will make video of what I service on my automobiles uh, most of the time, not all the time. But if I say I did it, you're more than welcome to take it to somebody else and make sure I did it. But I have no reason to lie. Uh, from my situation, I just sell good stuff. <laughs> and period, point blank. You know, this particular Jeep, um, the only pause for concern that I have with it is not mechanical, it's that sky slider leaks air like a sieve doesn't leak any water which is crazy but man it leaks air you know a couple months back we did the we did the uh skylighter uh uh wind vent there didn't really help all that much but it was still a good idea and that was a great video anyway so i hope all this information uh helps you a little bit when you're going out to purchase a, a pre-owned car um god bless you guys i appreciate you so much keep the nice comments coming uh, subscribe, click the notifications, still building the page. I'll keep for years sending you guys good information and the stuff that I know. God gave me a gift. I do not mind sharing it. If you have any questions, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair.